Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is diffraction. Diffraction is a wave phenomena that describes bending of waves around obstacles or openings and spreading out when traveling through small slits or apertures. I have discussed this topic earlier as well when we studied wave mechanics for AS level and quantum mechanics for A level students under wave particle duality starting from debate of Newton versus Hagen in 17th century till the development of wave mechanics in this year 1927. Today's lecture will exclusively discuss diffraction phenomena in further detail. As a reference, I have placed links of my two previous lectures in the description below. We will also compare different intensity distribution curves obtained using two or more than two slits and will also differentiate between two different kinds of diffraction that is Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction. principle of diffraction of light. According to Hagen's principle, every point on a given wavefront, see this plane wave, every point which is labeled as red circular dot, it behaves like a source of light, okay, and it gives rise to secondary wavelets, these small circular waves, which spread out in all the directions with the speed of a wave. The new position of the wavefront is Determined using Hagen's principle. This new wavefront is drawn by drawing a line tangent to all the wavelets. See, this line is tangent to all the wavelets. And you must compare these two interference effects using different light sources. Even we use laser light, the interference pattern obtained is same. Okay. So condition for diffraction. There is a condition for diffraction to take place that size of the slit should be comparable with the wavelength of incident wave. Consider two, these two diagrams. In the first case, this opening is dark, so diffraction effects are very minimal, okay? Because the condition is not being fulfilled here, because the width of the gap is very, very large as compared to the wavelength of the incident wave. Now, in the second case, the width of the opening is comparable with the wavelength of the incident wave, so diffraction effects produced here are more significant. So examples of diffraction of different kinds of waves. Diffraction occurs with all kinds of waves including sound waves, water waves and electromagnetic waves such as visible light, x-rays and radio waves. Now this first picture shows water wave diffraction through a small hole in the dam or small opening in the dam. Here you must recall ripple tank experiment uh, performed in the laboratory, okay, which IPCSE and AS level students, they perform in the laboratory to observe water wave diffraction. And this picture is that of sound wave diffraction through a crack on the wall. And this is the example of light diffraction which is explained on the basis of Hagen's principle that I have stated just now. Now another example of diffraction of sound waves. Sound waves in the audible range have wavelength from a few millimeters to a few meters. Sound waves diffract as they pass through doorways and hence the noise in one room spreads out in the next room. This is because width of a doorway is comparable to the wavelength of the sound. That is, condition of diffraction is fulfilled here. So this is the reason that sound waves are diffracted. Now, this 
Slips are intensity distribution curve due to single slip and multiple slips. This is due to single slip. In case of double slip, this pattern is obtained. In case of three slip, this one. And in case of five slips, this pattern is obtained. So it can be seen here that maxima in case of multiple slips are of rapidly falling intensity and they are well defined as well as the number of slips increase as compared to the pattern obtained due to diffraction through a single slip. Now diffraction of waves do using different light sources. So you now here again in these two pictures, this picture is that of diffraction of coherent laser light. See intensity distribution, maxima of equal intensity are observed. Now this is the sunlight and after passing through the single slit, again the diffracted light passes through two slits and we obtain alternate bright and dark band. That is after diffraction, interference takes place and we get due to constructive and destructive interference, bright and dark bands alternately and bright fringes are all equally bright if slit widths are of negligible size and central fringe which is known as central maxima will be white as path difference is zero and all overlap there that means the path difference the path traveled by these two waves will be same if the slit widths are negligible this distance d is close to zero it means then the equation for the path difference which is d sine theta equals n lambda for constructive interference and n plus half lambda for destructive interference in that case if theta is 0 sine 0 will be 0 so all the wavelengths will overlap here in the middle and we will get a central maximum fringe which will be white because all the wavelengths will merge together the diffraction of waves to using different light sources so you must compare the interference effects observed after diffraction has taken place in case of different light sources. This is the effect in diffraction pattern seen using coherent laser light. This is in case of sunlight and when we use light source like bulb. So it must be noticed that we observe the same pattern that is alternate bright and dark bands respectively. Now here it's uh, indicated that central maxima at central maxima, we get a bright fringe where path difference is zero because all the waves merge together. There is no extra length covered by the different waves. And to calculate first order, second order, maxima or minima, we use these equations we, which we have studied in detail when we were doing interference. So for constructive interference, we use d sine theta is m lambda and for destructive interference, d sine theta is equal to m plus half lambda where m is an integer, we can um, write any letter here that indicates an integer, where m is an integer, 0, plus, minus 1, plus, minus 2, and so on. For first order, we substitute m is 1. For second order, we substitute m is 2 in both cases, and we get these values. Negative sign indicates that maxima and minima lie on both sides of the central maximum in the screen. Another example of diffraction in fact, you have studied diffraction grating as well earlier, and the closely spaced tracks on a CD or DVD, they act as a diffraction grating to form the striking pattern seen when looking at the disc. Now, there are two kinds of diffractions, Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction. So I will ex try to explain the difference between these two kinds of diffractions. In Fresnel diffraction, source and screen are not far away from each other. Incident wavefronts are spherical, wavefronts leaving the obstacles are also spherical, and no convex lens is needed to converge the spherical wavefronts. Whereas, in case of Fraunhofer diffraction, source and the screen are far away from each other. Incident wavefronts on the diffracting obstacle are plane. Diffracting obstacle give rise to wavefronts which are also plane. Plane diffracting wavefronts are converged by means of a convex lens to produce diffraction pattern. So just to recap once more, it's in fact a diffraction phenomena with key points. So the point source with wave ray and wavefronts, 
see the incoming vapor. These are parallel waves. After passing through the aperture, we get spherical waves spreading out in all the direction. This diagram shows that central fringe is having maximum brightness. Therefore, intensity is maximum in the middle. For other orders, first order, second order, on both sides, we get maxima of rapidly falling intensity. Okay. What is the reason here? Why we get maximum brightness fringe in the middle? Because all the wavelengths merge together and yield one color only. Okay. So theta is zero, so path difference is zero. Explained in this way that after passing through this gap, all the waves have same wavelength and they are parallel and angle this is angle okay earlier we studied in terms of theta here it is denoted by t so t is zero in the middle in fact we can use any letter or any arbitrary symbol but the equation is the same to calculate the path difference between two consecutive waves for constructive or destructive interference of course after diffraction has taken place so that d sin theta is here, a sin t, it is same. t is theta and a is actually the separation of its waves. So in the middle, all the wavelengths, they merge together and all the colors, they combine, okay? There is no path difference, no extra distance covered by one wave as compared to the other. So the center will be having the maximum brightness, okay? In this so this diagram shows that angle T has some value, okay? This is the angle between the central line and the wave which gives rise to first order minimum, okay? We will use the same equation, D sine theta is equal to M lambda. In case of destructive interference or in this case, we use M plus half lambda, okay? Where M is an integer. In this case, M will be equal to 1, okay? Thank you for watching.